Kipling talks history. We're here to talk math tonight. But this whole idea of if we teach in the form of story, children remember what we have to say. Things won't be forgotten. Our job, particularly as teachers of young children, is to preserve and protect the enthusiasm they have for mathematics. They come loving it. And by the time they get to middle school, hmm, not so much. We want to establish a strong foundation. We want to keep them moving. So we use all the different representations that we have. What I want to think a few minutes about tonight is this idea that if we bring together the physical representation with the contextual representation, we end up with narrative. We end up with mathematics as story. And the story is the math. This isn't read a story, then go do math. This is that the story is the math. It's where it's grounded. And that means that we have to think about, as we work, the elements of story. We need a plot. What's going to happen here? We have conflict and resolution. We have characters. We have settings. We have props. Props are critical because they're what make the stories mathematical stories, not just a tale we tell. No naked numbers. They really don't make sense, so let's just skip them. It really is one of the most powerful things I think we can think about. Our storylines with primary children are really about adding and subtracting. So if you know table one, these are the four rows, and they form the basic plot lines of the mathematical stories that we tell. The conflicts in the story are the questions. What are we trying to figure out? Do we want to know what the difference is? Do we want to know a total? The resolution to the story is the solution to the problem. What's our answer? We're still doing our math, but we're doing it in the context of story. And our mathematical props, whether formal manipulatives or more informal tools, are things that we can use to feature and highlight the mathematics. So let me tell you a couple of quick stories about my friend Norma Jean. She's a kangaroo. She likes to jump. She collects toy cars. And she had five, and then when she got some more for her birthday, now she has eight. And the question is, what's the storyline? What's the narrative for figuring out how many she got for her birthday? In a classroom, we have a number line in the front of the room and kids hopping along. You get animated Norma Jean instead. Had five. How many more is it going to take to be eight? How many hops does that require to move from five where I started to eight where I am? When children do this, and they are the story, and the story is, is the mathematics, it brings great power to what they remember and what they learn. Is the number line always the right prop? No. Is jumping along the number line or a motion at all always the right strategy? No. Depends on the problem. So if we think about Norma Jean and her friend Ted in a different problem, now we're looking at the books that they have. Norma Jean has four, Ted has nine. I don't need a prop that will let me show motion here. But seeing those two values is a really big deal in this work. So I want to choose a model that will let me do that. In this case, I'm going to pick Cuisinaire rods. So my purple rod is Norma Jean's four. My blue rod is Ted's nine. And my mathematical question, my resolution to the story, what fills in the gap? What's the piece that comes in the middle and shows us that, in fact, Ted has five more books? It's that yellow rod. Could I use the number line as my prop? Sure. That would work, but it's going to look different than the number line did last time, because I don't need to move here. Nothing came, nothing left. I'm worried about how far apart Norma Jean and Ted are. So in class, we've got three kids now. We've got Norma Jean, we've got Ted, we've got a counter to help us think about how that works. What that means is that we're using these tools, we're using these manipulatives as props. We're thinking about what's the mathematics that they show, how does it bring that to life, so that the story is the math for the kids. The storytellers deep inside all of us as grown-ups, it's not so deep inside the kids. So if we can dig it out of ourselves and use that as a way of teaching the math, then what Kipling started us with becomes true. The children remember the math, and they never forget it because it is the story. Thank you.